This week on Healthy Living, how is climate change affecting people's health? We take a look. WHO's Director for Environment, Climate Change and Health, Dr. Maria Nera, tells us more about the impact of climate change on health and what can be done. Plus, a young Ghanaian photo artist reveals the impact of climate change on mental health through his lenses. These stories and more in this edition of Healthy Living. Hello and welcome to Healthy Living. I'm Linor Moudou. Climate change is causing some communities to experience some rise in temperature and others to be wiped out completely. Experts say overall, climate change is projected to increase threats to human health, particularly in lower income populations. They say climate change related health risks often impact marginalized and underserved communities who have the least resources to prepare for and recover from these disasters. Research by the UN's Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change reveals that the change in climate can affect people's health directly, including death and injury in floods and storms. Climate change also impacts people indirectly, with changes in the ranges of disease vectors, water quality, air quality, and food availability. From Fort Myers, Florida, to Guangdong, China, and Juba, South Sudan, climate disasters are causing numerous devastations around the world, leading to major health consequences. Here is more. Mode slides in South Africa, flooding in Nigeria, and record drought in the Horn of Africa are just some of the weather-related disasters that experts say have occurred this year due to the change in climate. My house is flooded. Uh, my community is flooded. People are suffering. No drinking water. No light. In fact, it's a terrible situation. Experts say disasters like mudslides, droughts, and floods cause high water stress. This means an increased risk of contracting waterborne illness, widespread displacement, and devastated agricultural lands that can lead to famine. I have never seen a drought like this before, because there is no place to work for our kids. But we pray to Allah to overcome this drought. I have lost so much. Close to 300 goats have died. 50 camels have died. And they still continue to die. Reports show that this is the worst drought the Horn of Africa has seen in 40 years. According to local officials at the Dabab refugee camp in Kenya, the Somali refugee children that arrived at the camp over the summer were suffering from severe malnutrition. But that wasn't the only health concern. We have a lot of cases with uh, respiratory tract infections. We have a lot of cases of diarrhea. Measles outbreak has already occurred and uh, now we are vaccinating all new arrivals up to 29 years of age. The World Meteorological Organization estimates that 250 million people will be affected by climate disasters by 2020. And the UN reports less than half of the African population has access to early warning systems to help cope with these disasters, and they are the most vulnerable to climate change. Dr. Maria Nera is the Director for Environment, Climate Change and Health at the World Health Organization. She tells us more about the impact of climate change on health and what can be done. We know that the global warming will change the transmission of certain diseases like malaria or dengue because the vectors will have better conditions to reproduce. And we know that fossil fuels is responsible as well on a big part of air pollution and air pollution is killing 7 million people every single year. We are concerned as well about how air pollution will be responsible for more uh, asthma cases, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, strokes, cardiovascular diseases and those uh, millions of deaths that Africa is already suffering because of the pollution levels of the air we breathe. If you find the causes of air pollution and climate change, you will obtain enormous benefits 
particularly for the African continent, is not up to the farmer to change himself or herself the, the access to the cleaner sources of energy. Governments need to invest on different sources of energy. A continent like Africa, you have a solar energy for free and you have a, a very, very uh, uh, rich capacity there. The, the technology is becoming more uh, affordable. So if governments want to invest, that will be a common sense strategic investments that will protect human health. As individuals, there is there are little things that you can do, like uh, re recycle, reduce, if possible, the use of burning wood or, or vegetal coal uh, to cook. If you have possibilities for something else, uh, do it, because otherwise it's very pollutant and that pollution is getting to your lungs and from your lungs going to the rest of the body. I know that all of those measures uh, the most important ones needs to be taken by mayors or politicians or uh, high-level governments in collaboration with international uh, community and then choosing the best for their population. We need to make sure that the, the leaders, they need to keep to their commitment not to go beyond the 1.5 degrees. That will be a disaster for the humanity, not only for the planet, it will be a, a disaster for us, for our human health. They need to accelerate the, the transition to, to clean sources of energy, stop giving subsidies to fossil fuels, and then giving financial resources to those vulnerable countries that are already suffering the consequences of climate change for them to adapt and of course uh, cope with the consequences that climate change is already having in those countries. As the world warms and extreme weather events mount, governments and corporations have been called on to address climate change. What are some solutions to tackle the change in climate? Take a look. Scientists and officials agree that it's important to not make matters worse by burning even more fossil fuels that emit heat-trapping gases into the air. Hopefully, cleaner alternatives like wind and solar energy might replace much of that demand. Because one of the key things is reducing our emissions from fossil fuels will lead to reduced air pollution. We know that air pollution kills up to 6 million people a year. And so we get these tremendous health co-benefits from dealing with climate change. As costs of renewables go down, more and more energy is being produced in sustainable ways, although research shows the total number of energy produced globally has increased. Most important is transitioning away from fossil fuels and for starters the way we generate our electricity. So at the moment a lot of electricity is generated with coal and oil but increasingly with renewables. Secondly, uh, transitioning out of um, cars that use um, fossil fuels, the diesel or petrol cars, into electric vehicles. But more efficient of course is to invest in electrified public transport. But we also have to take greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere. Carbon capture, which sucks carbon dioxide out of the air, is still being explored, but comes with a heavy price tag and is untested on a large scale. Methane, a greenhouse gas that is about 25 times more effective at trapping heat than carbon dioxide, will also have to be greatly reduced. Particularly in higher income countries, we need to eat less meat, so that, that would reduce emissions from agriculture. And also, if we could um, reduce our dependence on fossil fuel cars, on diesel and petrol cars, and use more what's termed active transport. These are activities that can lead to um, reduce climate change and make us healthier at the same time. Somali authorities are scrambling to avert famine from a record drought that has affected near 8 million Somalis, half the population. The largest city in Somalia's southwest state, Baidoa, is bearing the brunt as thousands of families flee starvation in the countryside to displaced camps in the city. Aid groups and authorities are pleading for international help to prevent further loss of life, as Mohamed Sheikh Noor reports from Baidoa, Somalia. The UN's World Food Programme says Somalia's worst drought in nearly half a century has wiped out millions of livestock and made nearly 8 million people, including 1.5 million children, face hunger. The unprecedented failure of a fifth rainy season 
in a row has displaced more than one million Somalis from the countryside. Our journey took us 10 days, during which three of my children died of hunger. We have not received any aid for the three months we have been here. Our only source of income is the firewood we cut and sell. If we don't sell any, we are unable to eat and sometimes go hungry all night. Children under the age of five, the most vulnerable to malnutrition, receive what care is available at Baidawa Hospital. We have experienced a severe drought during which we have not been able to grow our crops for four consecutive seasons due to lack of rain. Our livestock has been wiped out and my son is suffering from malnutrition. Hospital admissions for children are rising quickly. Malnourished children are at an alarmingly high rate. We were admitting about 150 to 200 children per month. Now the number of children per month has reached 300 to 400. Somalia's southwest state government is working closely with aid agencies to lessen the impact of the drought. Our goal is to ensure that no famine occurs in this country, and we expect God to help in our efforts to ensure that it does not happen. It is important that we do all that is possible to prevent people from dying of hunger. But in the makeshift camp is for displaced, there are few visible signs of adequate aid for drought victims. The last famine in Somalia in 2011 killed a quarter of a million people. If more food aid doesn't arrive soon, aid groups say another famine in Somalia could be even worse. Elroy Salam is a young Ghanaian photo artist. He has embarked on a project to raise awareness about the impact of climate change on mental health. We caught up with Salam, who told us more about his initiative. So with, with climate change, actually, I've been exploring mental health for a while now. And then I was researching some of the things that affect mental health directly and indirectly. There's always been campaigns and protests and all that about climate change. But then humans as we are, usually don't pay attention to them. And I've been a corporate because I feel like it's not affecting me directly. Although I've seen evidence that is happening. With climate change, I feel it's just the natural phenomenon that we as humans have created for ourselves that eventually might cause our extinction. There was one instance where I was in a public uh, vehicle and there were people arguing and talking about how hard the economy was. And these were people who usually work by the seaside. This case about the seaside is actually because of high sea levels and tides changing and all that. And these are all effects from the climate change. So indirectly, people are affected, their lives are affected, their jobs are affected. So I looked at all these things and found a way to represent it. I actually got the inspiration from an article I saw online where they talked about how people, especially kids, are affected by natural disasters and other effects of climate change. So you realize I used a little kid for my, as my muse in a way to show people that you don't have to like grow to a certain level before you educate people about mental health and climate change. In a way, it doesn't look appropriate to use a kid, but then I think that's the message people need to know that it's okay to talk to your kids about how they can preserve the environment and also pre preserve their mental health. There's an image of the muse with plastic bottles around his head that's like plants in it and all these are like symbolic for instance the plastic bottles usually are also part of the things that contribute to the climate change and we are trying to preserve the earth and that's why the plants are in it so that represents the nature there was a band around his head that also signifies i don't want to use the word bondage but then usually when we feel when we are going through this mental disorder or mental health crisis we feel a bit enclosed in our own world. I feel this project should be timeless and not disposable. So I'll just tell people to tell their own stories and try to go deep within themselves to express what actually bothers them instead of doing what others want them to do. That's our show for today. For more health news, wellness tips, and medical breakthroughs, stay connected to Voice of America at voaafrica.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Linor Moudou. Until next time, stay well and strive to make every day a healthy day.